country of the Darjara Rong. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the area we are on and their forebears. We acknowledge their living culture and the unique role in the life of the region. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Almighty God, we ask you to be present in this council, direct and guide our deliberations. We ask you to grant us wisdom and sensitivity as we deal with the business of our shire. May each decision that we make advance the well-being of all our residents. This we pray. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Councillors, I'm going to uh, suggest that we suspend standing orders and seek a motion to that effect. The purpose of suspending standing orders is to, uh, so that we can consider the order of business and in particular to move item 10.2 as listed, that is a notice of motion uh, by me in relation to Councillor Lovett, uh, and move that to um, suggesting that we deal with that after item seven as the, the, the uh, earlier items are really just uh, uh, fairly quick. So we'll deal with that before officers report after item seven. That means anyone in the gallery who needs to leave and wants to go at that stage, welcome to do so. Please don't feel awkward by leaving at that point. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the rest of the meeting, but it's a very busy time of the year. We've got a long agenda. So if you feel you feel that you'd like to leave at that stage and need to leave, please do so without feeling in any way awkward about it. So councillors so seeking motion to suspend standing orders of council. Yes, okay. uh, thank you, Councillor Bella, second to council, mm -hmm. Councillor Murphy. All those in favour. Those against information is carried. So again, the councillors, what, 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 if you're happy to do that, what I'm suggesting that we'll just put, we'll move that, that notice of motion 10.2 and we'll deal with it straight after petitions, which are nil in any case. So that's not going to take much time before we get on to officers' reports. Councillors, all happy with that? Okay, motion to resume, uh, resume the business of council. Uh, motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Second, Councillor Villa. All those in favour? Against, we resume the business of council. So, uh, it, apologies. I think we are we we are a full house. A couple of um, a couple of our executive staff uh, can't be with us tonight. Um, but uh, I think, from a, from a councillor perspective, we're all here. No leave of absence. Uh, councillor's disclosures of conflict of interest. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a conflict of eight point three procurement policy review. And 8.8 .8, <laughs> local roads and community infrastructure round three funding will be out of the room on those two. Thanks, Councillor Murphy. Would you just uh, probably just for the record just indicate the nature of the, the conflict that you have? So, the procurement policy, um, as I am a contractor to the council, this procurement policy I've been out of the room through this whole review because it, it could be a conflict for me. And in 8.8, .8, um, the community infrastructure around three funding, as uh, people know, I run swimming pools, and this is about swimming pool refurbishments and et cetera, et cetera, and I'm out of the room on that as well. Thank you, Councillor Murphy, and Julie noted. Uh, any other count any other conflicts of interest, councillors? If not, um, the move to the minutes of the previous council meetings and the, and the November meeting and our spe recent and special meetings. Councillors, one thing just to note in confirming the minutes, uh, we do note from the, uh, the most recent special meeting we had in relation to community support grants, the community, the community grants program and the community support recovery program, there was a bit of a mix up in headings there, which have been duly been corrected. So we will note that those corrections uh, in, in, the, uh, in the minutes uh, as discussed. Uh, so uh, with, with those changes, as we discussed, uh, are we happy to confirm the minutes? Anyone got any concerns? If not, the minutes are duly confirmed with those changes. Uh, we have no minutes of delegated advisory committees and we have no petitions. So therefore, uh, having regard to uh, the, the changes to our notice of motion, I will now seek to vacate the chair because I will be moving the notice of motion. Councillor seeking a motion to appoint a temporary per a chairperson to transact the next vote. Thank you, Councillor. Oh. Your motion? Um, my motion is to appoint um, Grace uh, Council Lavella as temporary chair. Thank you very much. Uh, second is that motion. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Spell. All those in favour? Those against? Uh, motion is carried. 
We don't have far to go, do we? No, we don't. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor and councillors. I invite the Mayor now to present his notice of motion. Thank you, Madam Chair, through to you. The motion is in two parts. The council recorded deep thanks, gratitude and appreciation for the contribution and service of Councillor Jeff Lovett to this council and our community as a councillor and past mayor. Having received advice from the Municipal Association of Victoria of his eligibility for 20 years service award from that association. And secondly, that we note the following testament of this contribution and service within the minutes of this meeting. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I'm aware that we have copies of this and perhaps some in the gallery do, but others who watch us online probably won't. Uh, and I think it's important, therefore, if, if you're agreeable, that I'd like to read that in, if, uh, uh, if so it goes into the minutes as follows. Councillor Jeff Lovett was first elected to the newly created Central Goldfield Shire Council in 1997, following the amalgamation of councils in Victoria and the appointment of commissioners. The Municipal Association of Victoria, the MAB, has recently officially recognised Councillor Lovett's completion of 20 years of service as a councillor and his eligibility for the MAB 20 Year Service Award. Councillor Lovett already holds the MAB Mayor Emeritus Award. At the time of his first election in 1997, as part of the first democratically elected council for Central Goldfieldshire, Councillor Lovett was already well known within Maryborough and the surrounding area as a community and business leader. The commitment to work hard and contribute meaningfully to the community were inherent, deeply held family values, which his parents were widely known and revered for. From the beginning of his period as a councillor, Councillor Lovett demonstrated an unswerving and clear vision for a great future for the Shire and its residents and a willingness to tackle the real issues and opportunities which would make a difference for the better. That vision and the passion to realise it has remained unchanging and undiminished over the years. It has been a constant and ready inspiration for countless councillors serving with him, especially those new and feeding their way. <coughs> Councillor Lovett has consistently championed the importance of education and has contributed to this not only through council, but through his own time and resources. He could see that the formation of a new P12 Maryborough Education Centre, MEC, offered an important opportunity, and as he remained an active, engaged and consistent champion of this initiative, including in the inevitable challenges and difficulties of its early days. As in all things, his oversight and guidance during the period of development of MEC was considered practical and relevant. Maryborough has always been uh, Councillor Lovett's home and his pride and its history and achievements and its opportunities uh, he, uh, he could see for it were a constant and driving force for change for the better. He advocated passionately for improved developments, important developments in Maryborough, including the redevelopment of High Street, return of passenger rail, the creation of station domain and countless other improvements and enhancements. A very special legacy which resulted in a national local government award and a state planning commendation was the leading edge vision and realisation of ensuring the sustainable reuse of the former heritage school building and sites to meet contemporary needs resulting in inestimable benefits. The national award recognises the level of creativity, success and complexity of this project and the limited resources for rural shire had to deliver that success. The preservation of the beautiful built heritage of the schools, their sustainable reuse to meet contemporary housing needs and the gifting from the Victorian government of what is now the council offices, as well as the magnificent presentation of station domain were immediate benefits. The favourable impact uh, to local economy of the repurposing activity and the long-term benefits to council through its increased revenue is immense. It's a matter of public record that the local government inspectorate was critical that council did not receive appropriate compliance advice during some aspects of that long and complex project. Something which under the Local Government Act, it was not the designated responsibility of the elected council to provide. 
That does not diminish in any way the immeasurable benefits to the community of that initiative or detract from the key leadership role Councillor Lovett played in achieving those benefits. Councillor Lovett is a keen and knowledgeable local historian. He has cherished and championed our wonderful built heritage legacy and actively worked to protect and enhance buildings and sites, including those which might seem less grand, but also tell an important story. Quite clearly, the preservation and enhancement of our built heritage and the recognition of its importance adds a great deal to Council Lovett's leadership. His keenness to actively support the benefits of the big world heritage listing for the central Victorian goldfields reflects his vision for the key role our heritage plays in our future sustainability and prosperity. Parks and gardens have also been an area of keen interest for Councillor Lovett, and he has a detailed knowledge of our tree plantings, especially our rare and special species. His attention and care to their preservation is well known and respected. The importance of growing our local economy and job creation has been an area of constant focus for Councillor Lovett, both in terms of new industry and retail attraction, as well as providing support and assistance for existing business to expand, develop and prosper. The success of new industry establishing in our shire has benefited from his experience, wisdom and good guidance. Councillor Lovett has been a creative skill and wise mayor during the terms he has skilled. Leading our, our, our shire with encouragement, focus and polished delivery. He is a highly experienced and impressive chair. Councillor Lovett has led the shire through good times and in more challenging times. When faced with difficulties, in resolving commitment is unflinchingly to make the best decisions for the future of the Shire as it is in the happier times. Those more difficult decisions continue to serve council and the community well. He is a thoughtful, helpful, and generous mentor to our new councillors. His dash of, of dry humour and quick wit can bring the house down and can masterfully diffuse a stressful situation. It's important to remind that the council life must be purposeful and focused, but should also be enjoyable and fun. And I have read the last bit of it. I just had that with my apologies, Madam Chair. I thought I was just. Thank you very much. My apologies to Madam Chair and to everyone else. I thought I had it all and didn't. So this is one of these pauses so that everything sinks through, but I haven't talked about one. Have you got it? Have you got it? Thank you very much. Thanks, the, the, the important bit. Thanks and recognition must also go to Councillor Lovett's wife, Margaret, who herself is an active community leader and has been a hard-working, dedicated, dedicated and able mayoress. Quite simply, Council Lovett's contribution has been unparalleled in the history of Central Goldfields Shire and is likely to remain so for the foreseeable future. His tireless resolve to make a difference for the better continues. The benefits of his contribution to Council as a councillor and mayor will impact generations to come. For this, Council and the committee can only record their deepest thanks, gratitude and appreciation. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. My apologies for that last bit. I thought I had it all with me and didn't. So that, that is the, the motion, Madam Chair, I seek to move. And is there a seconder to that motion? Did I, Councillor? Jerry, would you like to speak? No, I'm right. Um, the Mayor said everything I serve, I'm serving now with uh, Council Love and I served with nine months um, previously with Council Lovett and he, in that nine months he taught me a lot about this Shire and um, he's, he's a very good mentor for people and um, I get on extremely well and he's uh, very dedicated uh, and he's helped me a lot. Thank you Councillor Murphy. Any other councillors yeah. like to say? If, if I Councillor to do it. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, Councillor Lovett, my first year of being on council <laughs> has given me a, a, an appreciation of the commitment and energy it requires. It has given me a sense of real respect for what you have achieved over the course of 22 years of selfless service to this community. 
my history and our family's history with you started approximately 20 years ago when you were part of a decision made by council to support our family's settlement in Meribara. You have served in many capacities, including as mayor, and I believe there is real respect from in the community for your integrity. As the elder statesman on our council, you provide stability and insightful views that I value very much. I am proud to be serving with you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bears. Any others? Next comment. I'll have a crack, but. <laughs> 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 so, um, so I should have liked him a little bit more, Jeff. I should have been more articulate and have something written down. Um, yeah, again, as a, I knew of Jeff and, and didn't know Council of Love and um, I didn't know him personally. And then over the last 12 months, um, just the, the advice uh, has been uh, very valued. His dedication, um, anything to do with history, I, I think I um, I made the the error once of making comment on on something historical within the shire, and it was uh, duly put in my place. <laughs> um, yeah, so his, his knowledge is um, is exceptional, um, and the the shire is a, is a lucky place to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Councillor Lovett, I too am a new councillor and I, it has been a privilege and a pleasure to have been a councillor alongside you these past 12 months. Um, very steep learning curve, but I felt that with your guidance and informal chats over coffees, it certainly has made this road a little bit easier. Um, I love your quick wittedness. I love your banter and your sly stabs across the table. Uh, I need to sharpen up <laughs> quick time to be able to match that. So congratulations on 20 years and um, it's been wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And finally, in closing, I haven't worked in this setting with you before now. However, I have gleaned over the last 12 months that you are absolutely wholeheartedly loyal to this community and would do anything for the benefit of this community as a whole. So thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I'd like to move to resume standing orders. Can we, can we applaud? Can we chat? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All, all in favour? <laughs> Carried. Thank you. Now I'd like to call for resumption of standing orders before I hand over to the Mayor, or is that, am I a bit... Oh, well, I think that's with you. Okay. Yeah, so. Can I take your paper? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry about <laughs> that. I thought I was all organised with that. Can I just ask before we do, uh, could I ask Councillor Lover just to come up, please? Come up here. <coughs> we do have a small gift for you. Uh, and to thank you very, very much uh, deeply from the council and the community for 20 years of quite splendid, not equal service. Thank you. So now we're at item eight, officers' reports. Item 8.1, the CEO employment and remuneration policy. Council seeking a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move. Thank you very much. Uh, any your motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that Council repeal the Chief Executive Officer employment and remuneration policy and adopt the draft Chief Executive in Officer Employment and Remuneration Policy as attached to the December 2021 report of the General Manager Corporate Performance CEO Employment and Remuneration Policy. And this is laid down in Local Government Act 2020, Section 45, 18, 1G of the Act. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lovely. Second, is that motion? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Councillor Lovely, both of you for talking about the motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. This is an administrative change to fit in with the um, Local Government 2020 Act. Uh, we do have a Chief Executive Officer Employment Matters Advisory Committee that consists of yourself, Councillor Labella and myself. And we have an independent ch uh, chairman, Mr. Chris Eddy, who has served since September 2020. Uh, Mr. Eddy is a former local government CEO and has extensive experience and is currently an administrator of the city of Whitt Whittlesea. So a very, very talented committee. And we sit down with the CEO and go through all the things with relationship to her employment policy. And it is a, it's pleasurable to sit there and sit down with the CEO and go through it on an annual basis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Bell. Oh, I won't add much more. Just that the draft executive officer employment remuneration policy has been reviewed in accordance with the Local Act, Act, Government Act 2020, and it is more procedural than anything just to keep up to date with the new Act. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Any other councillors? Well, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. Now, something I meant to say before we moved on to the courts again, if people in the gallery need to leave, it's lovely to have you there, but please do understand you've got other things to do. Feel free to leave without, without any guilt at all. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, item 8.2, complaints policy review. Seeking a motion, councillors. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move that council repeal the complaints resolution policy and adopt the draft complaints policy attached in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. A second, please. Councillor Murphy, thank you for that. Councillor Sprout, motion, please. Through the Mayor. Uh, like the previous motion, this is an administrative measure. Um, this complaints policy is a document that has already been adopted for some time. This is to align the policy with the Local Government Act 2020, um, and this has to be adopted by December 31. Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Councillor Murphy. I concur and the process, December 31, to get it through. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Any other councillors? No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.3, Procurement Policy Review. Oh, so, yes, one note, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. He's declared a, a conflict of interest earlier and is leaving the gallery. Um, so, seeking a motion on 8.3. The motion that Council repeal the procurement policy and adopt the attached draft procurement policy in accordance with, in, in accordance with the Local Government, Government Act 2020. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and a second Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Councillor Bell, I'll talk to the motion, please. Well, this is um, a motion, the background information in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020's 108, Council must adopt a procurement policy which is consistent with the Act by the end of uh, December 2021. 2021. Uh, procurement policy is based on a policy developed in conjunction, in conjunction with other councils in our region and adapted to the central goldfields requirement and structure. Uh, the new LGA encourages collaboration in procurement and in other areas of council operations. A key difference with the new Act is that the, uh, the strict threshold for tendering, 150,000 for goods and services and 200,000 for works, is being replaced with a more flexible approach with which council can determine the appropriate approach, although it is still critical that in that regard, according to LGB's preface to the new best practice guidelines. 
So that uh, that's all I have to say with this. That the procurement policy caused a lot of grief with a lot of councils, but I think this is quite a good draft procurement policy. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Councillor Sprout. Great, man. Um, yeah, obviously procurement's been been a, a topic that we've we've all kind of discussed it at one point or another, and uh, there's been numerous discussions about this at, at council, and it was really um, satisfying to to read. The, the way the policy is being put together. I think it's kind of really reflected some of the councillors and community's concerns. Um, uh, really happy to see that um, some of the, the minimum ratings with environmental sustainability, social sustainability, uh, and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people are in there as well. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to thank the officers for preparing this and, and listening, and it's a really good document. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Other councillors? So I'll put the motion. All those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Can we perhaps get Councillor? Oh, thank you. Get Councillor Sproul back. Councillor Sproul. Councillor Murphy back in again. And we note that uh, Councillor Murphy has re-entered the uh, chamber. <coughs> Item 8.4, a section 11A instrument of appointment and authorisation. Seeking a motion? Thank you, Councillor Sproul, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move that um, Council adopt the attached S11A instrument of appointment and authorisation for the members of Council staff set out in the instrument attached to the December 2021 report of Manager, Governance, Property and Risk, S11A instrument of appointment and authorisation. Thank you. Uh, number two, sorry, uh, the S11A instrument of appointment and authorisation comes into force immediately and remains in force until council determines to revoke it or vary it. And three, that the attached S11A instrument of appointment and authorisation be signed by the Chief Executive Officer. Good, thank you, Councillor Sprout. Apologies for cutting you off, good prematurely. Uh, Councillor Bella. Oh, nothing to add, it's mainly procedure. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, anything more you want to add, uh, Councillor Sproul? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other councillors? I will put the motion. All those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.5, uh, this is something that has been a big one. Uh, Central Gold Hill Shire Council 2020-2021 Annual Report. Seeking a motion, councillors. Thank you, councillor Williams. Thank you. I move that um, council receive the Central Goldfield Shire Council 2021 annual report and note that this has been submitted to the minister. Thank you very much. Uh, seeking a seconder. Thank you, councillor Councillor Long. Councillor Williams. Um, the annual report is a, a very um, interesting document to read. Uh, a lot of effort and work went into it from every single person, I think, um, working at council. Um, it is, it's a comprehensive um, overview of the achievements and operations of council and what has been done um, for the past year. Um, the report also contains the audited financial statements, which I am sure a few, few people would love to read and go through. Um, and then, yep, and then it will it will be available to the public on council's website. Thank you very much, Council Long. Thank you, through the mayor. Um, I read the report and I actually was blown away by it. I didn't realise we had achieved so much in the first year, but I would really like to commend um, the CEO, Ms Roffey, and the staff for producing such an excellent piece of um, work. It was really uh, 
really well laid out and lots of great photos showcasing our shire. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Long. Any other councillors? Councillor Murphy. I think it's important that uh, the community get hold of the report and, uh, and have a read of it. Um, these, these documents aren't just for the um, gas stuff, the dust gatherers, or to do things because we have to do things for state government. These are these these report this 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 report is what's happened over the last twelve months. It gives you an indication of where we've come from, where we've been, what's been done. Uh, there has to be a clear understanding of how much work's been put into the into the community from the, the Shire offices. And um, because there's a lot of things that happened and we also have to realise that we, we've had a lot of um, capital works on uh, and we really, the situation where I believe it's we really about a six to $7 million capital works and we're still we're working on a $20 million capital works through grants and that we've had, we've had a pandemic, we've had the COVID, we've had the lockdowns, we've had, Grants for for streetscapes, for grants for offices, and really at the end of the day, the report tells it all. So people could please read it, and um, and if you've got any queries on it, uh, yeah, give us give us councils a ring and say hello and and see how how we how you like it because it's something we all should be proud of as a community, not just the show officers, not just the councillors. We're all in this together, and we should be proud of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors? I'd just like to say, well said, Councillor Murphy. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Other councillors? I just want to add myself at the end, really, the comments that have already been said. This was a wretched year, and it was a wretched year for our staff to do things to support our community but they did that in most trying times. At the same time, we managed to secure more grants, more development, more opportunities. A, a really hard task and a hard work in the best of years, let alone the worst of years. So it really does deserve, uh, I think, congratulations as already been expressed. Again, you can I formally on behalf of council express to you uh, as CEO uh, and the staff, I think our deep appreciation and thanks for a splendid job done in the most difficult of circumstances. And as Councillor Murphy said, everyone should read the annual report. report. We'll find ways of trying to bring chairs on that information because it really does tell a wonderful story and everyone should be proud, proud of it. And I think our community should be proud to see what's happening We're happening for them. So congratulations. And I'll put the motion, all those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.6, industrial land demand and supply assessments and strategy. Seeking a motion. No, Councillor De Villiers. Um, I'll move for that council adopt the industrial land supply and demand assessment and strategy as presented and request an officer report on options for council-led development of land it owns in Brickkillen Road, Flagstaff, to create a new small lot industrial estate to implement recommendations of the strategy while managing interface issues with the adjacent low-density residential area. Thank you, Councillor uh, Villiers. Second, that's motion. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Councillor De Villiers, uh, talking to motion, please. Um, this um, is a really interesting strategy to, and we've been working on this with the council officers for some time. Um, just analysing what industrial land is available and what other areas could be zoned additionally to the existing ones. And a really interesting development will be to watch um, the option for council-led development of land. I think that will be a first that council develop um, residential um, estates for people to use. Um, yeah, so it's, um, it's well worth a read. Thank you, Councillor. But it's Councillor Love. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This... Um industrial land demand and supply assessment is very, very important to council. In fact, it's one of the strategic 
strategic ob objectives of council. And this goes hand in hand with our recently adopted uh, retail housing, residential housing strategy. As a council, we've got to ensure that we have enough, uh, um, enough um, industrial land available, both to support possible new industries that come here, but any expected population growth we have. As Councillor de Villiers said, we've spent a lot of time looking at this in the various areas. Uh, we've got to make sure that the land that we identify for an industrial land is zoned accordingly. And it is very important for the Shire's future that we have this, this land available in the future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lover. Other councillors? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.7 Planning Reform. Council seeking a motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. The motion, the recommendation is that the Council we advocate to the Minister of Planning seeking further detail of the planning reform program. We seek that the Minister of Planning undertake consultation with local government and the community before planning reform changes are introduced. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. A second is that motion? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Councillor De Villiers. Councillor Murphy, talks to much to say. This is uh, straightforward. The state government is undertaking a planning reform program that seeks to streamline the planning process for proposals which are considered important for the state's recovery from the pandemic and economic growth, more generally the economic growth. So the report underlines staff understands the reform program and has been advised by the Minister of Life Social of Victoria about the possible changes. So it's important that we um, get this through to the Minister and it's important that we um, have this reform. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Levy. Councillor Levy? Um, no, thank you. That's nothing to add. Any other councillors? Right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.8, .8, Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Program Round 3 funding. Seeking a motion. I noticed also that Councillor, uh, uh, Councillor Murphy is leaving the, the chamber. So I'll wait till he's left. So seeking a motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to move an alternative motion, please. Um, Item A is the same. I will read that out, but I would like to add point B. Uh, a states that Council notes that 140,000 of the round three of the local roads and community infrastructure grant will be allocated to the Tolbert Town Hall Toilets Project. Two, that the remainder of the round three of the local roads and community infrastructure grant will be allocated to fixing high priority risk areas at Council's indoor and outdoor pools relating to public safety, staff safety and environmental risk. Point three, that the final works for the pool facilities will be reported at a future council meeting. And then, Mr Mayor, I'd like to add in point B, council expresses its thanks and appreciation to Dr Ann Webster MP for the many initiatives funded by the Local Roads and Infrastructure Program and request her to make representations to her ministerial colleagues to continue this program into the future as a much needed component of local government funding in the regions. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Long. A seconder? I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Villiers. Councillor Long will speak to the motion, please. Thank you, through the Mayor. As a councillor, um, I've seen firsthand what a boost the first two rounds of funding has done to the Shire and my local ward, Flynn Ward. There's been a renewed sense of optimism and engagement, especially in the smaller townships. These residents feel that they are not forgotten about. I'm very pleased that the remainder of round three of the local roads and community infrastructure grant will be allocated to fixing high priority risk areas at Council's indoor and outdoor pools relating to public safety, staff safety and environmental risk. We're very fortunate to have such fantastic pools in the Shire and Denali outdoor pool included. They are a magnet for our local residents, especially on hot days. Families are able to cool off and enjoy the surroundings. With this funding, the pools will have important works carried out, something that is typical, typically difficult to attract other funding source, sources for. 
And of course, Mr. Mayor, uh, it will be wonderful to see $140,000 of round three of the local roads and community infrastructure grant allocated to upgrade the Tolbert Town Hall toilets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Other councillors? Nothing to add. Other councillors? Thank you. Can I just say, in relation to the advocacy or your added uh, mm -hmm. parts, thank Councillor Long. Um, this, this grant, as a rural board councillor, I know my own board, this has been managed from heaven. This has enabled stuff of dreams to come true, things that we could never have ever funded. Some of them simple things, like hot water for reef. We now have running hot water. What joy. I've taken 100 years to get it, but we have it. But, but we've also done a big projects too, of course, for Pars and Mary Road, obviously a key one. This is a wonderful program and simply the ask of, of the federal government through Dr Webster and her advocacy is simple. We need it to continue because if it continues, we can continue to do good things and we continue to do good things for our community that otherwise we just can't do. So the big ask, mindful of an election, is please make this an ongoing funding program. I'll put the motion, all of those in favour, those against the motion is carried. Mm -hmm. We bring Councillor Murphy back in, please. Well, I'll note that Councillor Murphy's re entered the chamber again. Um, 8.9 the adoption of the Princess Park Grandstand Conservation Management Plan. Seek your motion, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Mayor, I would like to move that Council 1 adopt the Cultural Management Plan for Princess Park Grandstand. 2. Notify the community of the cultural management plan for Princess Park Grandstand through Council's media channels and three, seek funding to commence work on restoration and repair of Princess Park Grandstand. Thank you, Councillor Lover. A second to the motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Lover, I'd like you to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're very fortunate in Central Goldfield Shire that throughout the entire Shire we have numerous historic and heritage class buildings. But sadly, there's a sting in a tail that comes with these heritage buildings, many of them dating back to the 19th century, and that is that they have to be maintained. The Princess Park precinct in Mirraburrah is the jewel in the crown of this town and dates back to 1857. Just imagine 64 acres of parkland in the middle of town. There are not many towns that can boast that. Within Princess Park, we have a number of important individual elements. Our Art Deco swimming pool, the Band Rotunda, and of course, magnificent Lake Victoria. But possibly the most visible of these elements is the grandstand. It was erected in 1895 and is in exact copy of the grandstand at Lakeside Oval in South Melbourne, the home for many years of the VFL team, the South Melbourne Swans. In 1905, the president of Collingwood Cricket Club visited Meribara on New Year's Day with some of his committee men. And he was so impressed with the Meribara grandstand that when he got back to Melbourne, they wrote to the Meribara Council seeking the plans so they could copy it. And in fact, the grandstand, the home of Collingwood Football Club at Victoria Park, was an exact copy of the Miraburra grandstand. It should be noted though, that of these three grandstands, the only one that exists today is Miraburra, and it is incredibly important. There are very few wooden 19th century grandstands still left in Victoria. 
particularly in rural Victoria, and we have one of the grandest. The reality is that it is a 19th century built building, very much in need of love and care. When we look at the facilities in 2021, the facilities are quite ancient. Uh, there are virtually no facilities for meet female competitors down at Princess Park and the grandstand itself structurally is in need of repair. So this is a very important document and I encourage the community to get involved to make their comments so that we can go to the government seeking funding to restore this magnificent piece of infrastructure here in Maribara. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Um, just to add a few things, I think the one of the, the situation is the only one exists of that grandstand out of the three, and how we are responsible for the future of the grandstand and the future for the community to have that grandstand. Now, I'm sure Councillor Lovett goes back before me, but I can remember in the 60s and 70s, running up those um, stairs, training, training the Prince's Park, being in the club rooms underneath. Remember the 60s and 70s where, you, where uh, we had the um, Highland Games, which we still have now. And there's a lot of things wrapped around this green scene. And we've had um, the related life, we have the entry breakthrough now. But what we have to ensure, and what we have to do is get money and the community come on board with this is this grand sense will be there for another hundred years. And we have to keep working with these situations. This this is a, a, a twist of a queen situation because we need we we want these historical sites, we love these historical buildings, but we have to find the money. Sometimes the money has to be found for some areas where we have to use it from some other areas. But if we're all on the same page with the grandstand and other heritage buildings, that um, this the the shire and the future of the shire and its heritage buildings in the next hundred years, in a hundred years' time, when the next councillors or whatever we call them um, come there and go, well, thank you very much for saving these this, this historic building. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors? If not, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.10 Domestic Animal Management Plan Review. Councillor, seek your motion. Councillor Sprout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move that Council adopt the Domestic Animal Management Plan, the DAM plan. Submit the DAM plan to Agriculture Victoria and notify the community of the domestic animal management plan through Council's media channels. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. A second to that. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Councillor Sproul. Over to you. Through the man. Uh, so, under 60, Section 68A of the Domestic Animal Act, the domestic animal management plan is something Council required to do every four years. The primary focus of this plan is dogs and cats. We're committed to the balancing, the balancing the needs of pet owners in our community with those that don't have pets. This plan promotes responsible pet ownership and whilst also highlighting uh, the legislation that uh, is possible. Uh, the second round of consultation is complete with three submissions and several comments through social media, which resulted in our fantastic cover picture. Responsible pet ownership is the operative phrase here. Pet owners need to be considerate of other members in our community. Um, and other pet owners too. Uh, it's little things like keeping your dog on a leash or picking up their waste, having your pets de-sexed and registered. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Amy and Mark for their work in preparing the document. Uh, it's full of great information and easy to read. Um, it was great to see all the photos of the people's pets, including council staff and councillors. Uh, I have to give a special shout out to that good-looking dog, Archie, on page 46. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Two dogs in the council family that have made their way into that publication. Archie is certainly no good. Uh, other councillors? I'll second. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. got carried away with that. Actually, it's leading on with what was. Thank you. It, it, uh, do you want to talk? Well, just in conclusion, the dam plan meets the guidelines contained within the Domestic Animals Act and the requirements from Agricultural Victoria. Victoria. This document provides a blueprint on how Council's Animal Man Management Service will run for the next four years with a focus on community education around responsible pet ownership. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Other councillors? Well, I'll put, put the motion. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.11, a waterway management plan for Carrisville. Councillor seeking a motion. And I would like to move that um, council adopt the Carrisbrook Waterway Management Plan. Thank you, yeah. And are you adding to that at all, or information? Uh, do you want me to talk to it now? Or oh, just... no, no, well, just, just, just that. Oh, okay, then. Number two. The second three, yes, three, to develop an implementation plan for the Waterway Management Plan for Carrisbrook that further documents Time frames for the recommendations and provides advice to council about the resources required to implement the waterway management plan for Carisbrook. Thank you, Councillor Davidi. Is the second to that? Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Councillor Davidi. Talk to the motion, please. Thank you. Um, since the Carisbrook Creek is in my ward, um, I realised that how important it is to the local community and what an intrinsic part it plays in their lives. Um, this plan is important in that it provides a framework from where further detail can be added in time and as such, such forms a memorandum of understanding of general intent and purpose and process. This is also a plan and a vision subject to funding. It is a roadmap. This plan also provides an opportunity for community leadership and contribution and volunteerism within the community. So I'm really excited um, about the, um, adopting this plan. Um, but I would also like to stress that the execution of the plan will depend on funding and manpower at council level to be achieved in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor De Villiers. Councillor Lucy. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, just, just a couple of things that I, it's about the resources required, resources from the from grants and how we get money to do some things. Um, and then the creek, there's nothing you know, to I didn't jump off the bridge, I'm mm -hmm. too scared. But getting the creek, getting that, getting that water flowing again to me is the main thing. Yeah. That really is the main thing. It's getting the water flowing down through the creek, through the whole, through the whole system. And that is the main, main, main area we should be looking at firstly, mostly, but after that, any incident house comes after it. So I'm pretty keen to make sure it flows, it's fresh water, it's looking good. And it's not clogged up by the, um, the, the reeds and things which are there now. So let's get on with this, get some funding and go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors? Well, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Mm -hmm. Item 8.12, planning scheme amendment, uh, ministry, ministerial intervention to correct errors in the central goldfields planning scheme. Go council seeking motion. Thank you, Councillor Mother. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would like to move that Council 1 request the Minister for Planning intervene using his powers under Section 20A of the Planning and Environment Act 1987 to amend the central goldfields planning scheme to co correct errors regarding number four Tullerit Road, Meriburra, and 46 Middle Road, Denali, and two, to authorise the Chief Executive Officer to act on Council's behalf in this matter. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Seeking a second motion. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Councillor Lovett, I'd like you to talk to Thank you very, very much, Mr. Mayor. 
this this uh, motion is aimed at correcting two anomalies in our planning scheme. Number four, Tullerip Road is a large area of vacant land on the corner of Tullerip Road and Burn Street. Recently, a young man purchased that land with the intention of de developing homes there. When he made an inquiry of the Shire, he discovered the por portion of the land was zoned public park recreation, and therefore he could not proceed with his residential development. A similar thing happened at number 46 Middle Road when we looked at the heritage overlay for that area. In fact, the planning department found that that heritage overlay in, is incorrect. So the best way of solving these two problems is to seek intervention directly from the minister to resolve these er errors in the planning scheme and his involvement is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Other councillors ever? Nothing to add to that. Uh, other councillors? Well, I'll put the motion, or oh, sorry, thanks for this one. Um, yeah, the, the land in Meribah uh, has just been sitting idle for, for years, and because of this industrial situation, um, you can't go further. We need to rectify this centre one is only, but we need to rectify it fast and um, move on, some build some homes, get some rates and have, uh, there's good building land there. Uh, there's a house next to it, there's houses at the back of it, units at the back of it, and we just need to get on with it. All right, thank you, councillor. Any other councillors? Well, I'll put the motion, all those in favour. Those again, the motion is carried. Uh, item 8.13, the November financial report. Councillor Sydney motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Yes, Mayor. Uh, look, the Councillor sees and notes the attached financial report for the period to the 30th of November 21. Thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. A second, Thank you, Councillor Love. Councillor Murphy, talk to the motion, please. Just going to read um, a couple of paragraphs from the from the report, which will help the community understand a bit more. The income statement is tracking ahead of budget for the five months to the 30th of June. This relates to the recognition of previously received grants, as well as the rate notes that have been issued. The balance sheet remains strong with a strong cash position. This cash is anticipated to be drawn down on as a capital works program ramps up. So as we do, more capital works that cash was drawn down on. The focus on cash flow forecasting, as well as the cash flow statement, is used to ensure cash is optimised while still available to draw on as required. The capital works statement is shown a spend of $6.873 million. While this is behind budget, it is anticipated that the increased spend will begin in the coming months. It's uh, for the whole, for the last year, Presenting these, uh, the financial statement being presented. Um, so they've only been good news. And, and I just need to say that we've been here for 12 months. And um, every time I talk about this, you read this and um, understand more understanding about it because I've got a good knowledge of finance. And I just see that it's uh, it's going well. And I think that we have to, we have to really truly appreciate the council officers. And, the, um, and Mr. Smith and his team. Uh, but at the same time, we're going well. You know, this community is going well. We've got to, we need the money to be able to do the deals, to do the things we have to do. So we're just talking about the grandstand. There's things we've got to do. There's, there's things out there that we're doing now and going to do in the future, which will need, need um, turnover. So I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with this. I can't see uh, why I can't recommend it and we don't forward it. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors? No. Yeah. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against, the motion is carried. 
Item 8.14, use of the land for portable store mill at 134 Bedbed Creek Road, East Beckley, 3472, Planning Permit Application 006 21. Councillor seeking a motion. Thank you, Councillor Long. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll uh, read out the motion. It's a long one, so bear with me. Uh, I'd like to move the recommendation that Council have enforced notice of planning application number 00621 to be given under section 52 of the Planning and Environment Act 1987 and the Central Gold Book Planning Scheme and having considered all the matters generally required resolved to issue a notice of decision to grant a permit in respect of planning application number 00621 for the land known and described as 134 Bet Bet Creek Road East Betley for the use of the land for a portable store mill in accordance with the endorsed plans and subject to the following conditions. No layout alteration. Number one, the use must be undertaken generally in accordance with the endorsed plans. The endorsed plans must not be altered without the further written consent of the responsible authority. Location of the portable sawmill when in use. Number two, when in use, the portable sawmill must be located in accordance with EPA publication 1518 recommended separation distances for industrial residue, residual air emissions guidelines and as such must remain a 250 metre setback from the nearest dwelling on an adjourning lot. Number three, appropriate dust separate suppression measures shall be implemented to ensure that a nuisance is not caused to adjoining landowners or the general public to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. Hours of operation, number four. Except with the prior written consent of the responsible authority, the use permitted by this permit must operate only between the following times. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Wednesdays and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Thursdays, excluding Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Amenity requirements, number five. Noise levels emanating from the premises must not exceed noise levels as determined by the EPA Victoria Publication Noise Limit and Assessment Protocol 1826.4 or result in unreasonable and aggregate aggravated noise as defined by part 5.3 of the Environmental Protection Regulation 2021 or other equivalent policy to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. Within three months of the commencement of the permit, the owner will submit an acoustic report pre prepared by a suitably qualified acoustic specialist to the responsible authority demonstrating that the sawmill under ordinary use meets the requirements of the EPA Victoria Publication Noise Limit and Assessment Protocol 1826.4 to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. Any recommended alterations from the suitably qualified acoustic specialist must be undertaken within three months of the report being to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. The permit holder will ensure that the use continues to meet the EPA Victorian Publication Noise Limit and Assessment Protocol 1826.4. Storage, number six. When not in use, the portable sawmill associated equipment, fuel and oil must be appropriately stored within an outbuilding on the site in accordance with the endorsed plans. Expiry, number seven. This permit will expire should any of the following occur. The use allowed by this permit is discontinued for a period of two years. The responsible authority may extend this period if a request is made in writing before the permit expires or within six months afterwards. Thank you, Councillor Long. A second to the motion. Thank you, Councillor Lavella. Councillor Long, we'd like you to speak to the motion, please. I'll just catch me breath. <laughs> Through the bed. <laughs> what a tongue twister. Um, I would hereby like to move that a planning permit application for the use of land for a portable sawmill at 134 Bet Bet Creek Road East Betley be approved with the attached conditions. The application seeking to legalise the use of a small section of the site for the milling of timber logs by using a portable sawmill associated with a small business run by the landowner and their business partner. Um, this mill is used off-site most of the time, but sometimes it is used on-site when customers drop logs off at the site to be milled. The finished product is then picked up once finished. 
there has been an objection to this permit being granted by the residents of a neighbouring property who are concerned about excessive noise that could potentially be a daily occurrence. So again, I find myself torn between two very valid sides on this issue. People choose to live in a rural setting to enjoy the peace and quiet that only living in the bush can provide. Having a portable sawmill would certainly disturb this peace and quiet. However, on the flip side, if the applicant is not able to run a timber milling business which discretionary use within the zone is not out of place in this rural setting and is compatible with adjoining lots within the same zone, then where is the applicant supposed to go? This site is located within the farming zone, FZ, given the size of the site and the proposed use, the site is considered capable of accommodating this use. It does not impact upon physical features of the site, including vegetation and waterways. The use will not detract from any agricultural activity. The use does not remove agricultural land or affect soil quality. The mill does not impact upon natural and physical features of the site and broader area. The proposed use is not considered detrimental to flora or fauna. The use does not require any changes to the physical features of the site. The use does not generate wastewater and waste, which is sawdust, is reused for mulching and landscaping on the site. The proposed use is considered to generally be in accordance with the relevant decision guidelines of the farming zone. Given the rural setting, it is not considered inappropriate for intermittent use of a portable sawmill to occur on this site. So in conclusion, the fact that the site contains dense vegetation, which is scattered across the rear half of the site, and with the specified operation hours of eight to four Wednesday and Thursday, excluding Christmas Day and New Year's Day, and the submission of an acoustic report within three months of the commencement of the permit and recommended alterations, which is soundproofing, further uh, on the site from a suitably qualified acoustic specialist undertaking the three months of the report, I'm willing to move this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Long. Councillor Lavelle. Now, this is another one of those difficult decisions that we councillors must make. I listened intently to both applicants, uh, the applicant and objector last week. On one hand, we have what appears to be a hard working people wishing to utilise their correctly zoned farmland to make an honest and sustainable living. And on the other hand, we have a neighbour on an, an adjacent farmland property wishing to maintain a peaceful and quiet quality of life. I totally understand both sides of the debate. However, our job is to make decisions in accordance with the Central Goldfields Planning Scheme, the Planning and Environment Act, and the Municipal's Planning Strategy and Planning Policy Framework, not on emotion. The permit conditions outlined are extremely binding. There is no objection from the EPA Act. This application was advertised uh, uh, to 10 adjoining and surrounding landowners via letters in the mail, one advertising sign on the site and also on the council website with only one objection. The objections are listed on page 61 of the report if you're interested in looking at them. Should this go to BCAT, I believe the objector would lose and it would end up costing our ratepayers unnecessary money for our defence. When we as councillors can make this decision around this table today. So just again, please note the permit holder must ensure that the use continues to meet the EPA Victoria publication noise limit and assessment protocol 1826.4. So for all the reasons outlined and indeed others, I cannot see any reason we could refuse this planning permit application. Thank you, Councillor. There are other councillors? Um, okay, you go. Can Councillor Sprout first, then Councillor, uh, the Councillor for the years. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just like to add that uh, I actually went out to the properties, um, met the uh, the objectors and the applicant's wife who showed me around. I got to view the the operation, not in not actually in operation, but um, uh, 
yeah, I, I definitely um, support what Grace and Elizabeth say in regards to having that difficult balance between peaceful life and um, the, the opportunity to run a small business from home. So um, I just want to thank the, um, both the applicant and the objector for allowing me the time to speak to them. Thank you, Councillor Spur. Councillor Davidius. I would just like to add to what um, Councillor Lavella, Elizabeth, and Sproul said. Um, living on a farm implies an expectation of a specific lifestyle. There are sounds and noise associated with farming, which are accepted as part of the fabric of farming. That includes sounds produced by animal husbandry and cropping. It does not include heavy industrial noise. Um, and I just have a fear that once this planning permit is, is approved, that we will not be able to enforce the conditions that's within the permit. Um, and in the uh, officer's report, the planning permit trigger is that the use of land for sawmill is nested under rural industry and industry. And this area is zoned as, as a farm. Um, and I do have huge regard and sympathy and empathy with the, um, the immediate neighbors. Um, because it seems that this has become an intolerable situation with them as it is. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to support the application. Thank you, Councillor. Other councillors? Can Councillor Long write the reply? Thank you, through the Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor de Villiers. Uh, you've just stated that um, or likening the sound of this portable sawmill to heavy industrial noise, I would probably disagree with that. Um, I would say that it's more likely to be the sound of a chainsaw and I think if you live on a rural property with timber around and uh, I would imagine you'd have a fireplace, that that would be a, quite a common noise for rural living. Um, if neighbours were to chop up firewood, they would use a chainsaw. So I, I would disagree that it's heavy industrial noise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Long, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Uh, 8.15, development of the land for a single dwelling vehicle access and fencing at 29 Grace Street, Maryborough. Seeking a motion, councillors. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to move that council, mm -hmm. having caused notice of planning application 124-21, be given under section 52 of the Planning and Environment Act of 1987, and the Central Goldfields Planning Scheme, and having considered all the matters generally required, resolves to issue a notice of decision to grant a permit in respect to planning application 124-21 for the land known and described as 29 Grace Street, Maryborough, for the development of the land for a single dwelling, vehicle access and fencing at 29 Grace Street, Maryborough, in accordance with the endorsed plans and subject to the following conditions. No layout alteration. One, the development as shown on the endorsed plans must not be altered without the prior written consent of the responsible authority. Construction activities, two, the development must be managed during construction so that the amenity of the area is not detrimentally affected through the A, transport of materials, goods or commodities to or from the land, B, appearance of any buildings, works or materials, C, emission of noise, artificial light, variation, uh, sorry, vibration, smell, fumes, smoke, vapour, steam, soot, ash, litter, dust, wastewater, waste products, grit or oil, and D, presence of vermin or animals to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. Stormwater and drainage. All stormwater runoff from the proposed building hereby permitted shall be dispersed to the legal point of discharge to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. A vehicle access, the applicant or owner must make further application for and have approved driveway crossing permits for any crossover driveway works. All works constructed or carried out must be in accordance with the approved plans or permits. Once construction, the crossovers must uh, be thereafter maintained by the landowner to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. Asset protection. 
At any time, the permit holder must ensure that the operation and condition of council assets, including street, trees, drains and roads, are not damaged by the site construction works. If the responsible authority deems council assets have been detrimentally affected or damaged by development construction access, the assets will be required to be repaired and reinstated by the permit holder to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. Permit expiry. The permit will expire if one of the following circumstances applies. The development is not started within two years of the date of this permit, or B, the development is not completed within four years of the date of this permit. The responsible authority may extend the periods referred to if a request is made in writing before the permit expires or within six months afterwards for a request to extend the time to commence a development or 12 months after the permit expires for a request to extend the time to complete the development. The permit note, building approval, this permit is issued pursuant to the provisions of the Central Goldfields Planning Scheme and does not relieve the permit holder of the necessity to obtain building permit pursuant to the Building Act 1993 prior to the commencement of any construction or works on any part of the site. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Seeing a seconder. Councillor Murphy, Councillor Sproul, talk to the motion, please. Through the Mayor. Uh, this lot is covered under the Heritage Overlay Act H0206, which triggered the need for a permit. HO 206 is a broad overlay that covers a significant part of the Mirabara Township. The proposed building is one of design that will not impact on the surrounding dwellings. Uh, it is good to see the construction of new houses in our shire and I'm happy to see this go forward. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Councillor Murphy. Thank you. It's uh, good to see more development. I'm not really quite sure about this development up in that area and how small the blocks are. But I've never been that understanding about the size of the road. And I've gone up there a few times. And in this, in this it says background information. The agreement also prohibits on-street parking in Grace Street as required by the CFA. Now, I um, like to think that uh, hopefully that does happen, but I don't think it does happen. I don't know how we police that. The CFA cannot get up that street if people park on the street. I know we have to have smaller blocks and we have to have more opportunities for people to have houses, but it's, a, it's an interesting part of this, this uh not part of the recommendation, but part of it. It's also about um, access for, you yeah, can't get out on the, over the RACB weekend, then you break weekend, you can't get access on the Burn Street. It's basically locked in. So, it's, uh, so I, I have no problems with it. I have no problems with it also, but I have a problem with uh, the, the photo that's taken, all the, on page 66, if, they, if you went up there now, every every one of the blocks which are sold or not sold, it's about a metre high in grass. Even this block here that's going to be, is want to be developed. And I find that appalling. So um, I like that to be noted and I'll be talking to the council officers about that. Um, I just, I just, we know we, this, this was, passed in 2013. And it's one of those ones where we have to keep an eye on certain things, even though it's good development, there's a couple of houses going up there now, but people just need not to park on the street. If you park on the street, so if I, if I you can't get cars past your, past your car, and see if they can't get up there. And with grass like it is now, what happens? But I'm um, happy to I'm happy to say yes. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors? So I'll put the motion. All those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. That completes the officer's report. There's some fairly substantial reports there, so thank you all those. We have no use of the common seal. Um, Councillor Vella, I, I invite you to uh, move to present your notice of motion in relation to Crystal Hills Pioneer Memorial Tower. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the my notice of motion is that council write to Anthony Judd, Regional Director, Loddon Valley Forest Fire and Regions Department, and also of the Environment, Land, Water and Planning Department, commonly known as 12, requesting the department reopen Bristol Hill Tower as soon as practicable and advise council of the plan and time frame it intends to work within. Thank you, Councillor Lover. Seconded to that motion. Thank you, Councillor Lover. Councillor Lover, speaking to your motion. Bristol please. Hill uh, Pioneer Memorial Tower in Mirabar is currently closed and has been since June this year in 2021. The Hill Tower was built in 1933 during the Great Depression and climbing up to the top provides wonderful 360 degree views of the town and surrounding bushland, including the renowned Pyrenees Ranges. The tower is one of the many key tourism attractions in and around Mirabara, attracting many visitors on a weekly basis. We also know it is a peaceful retreat for many of our locals. The tower is owned by state government, managed by the department, or I'll say well, and common, yes, the Department of Water, Environment, Land and Planning. It is my understanding that Central Goldfield Shire's senior executive team have engaged with staff at 12 about what may be needed to reopen the tower. However, we have not as yet received an answer as to when the tower will be reopened for public use. After two years of intense COVID pandemic restrictions, we now have the freedom to travel around the state. It is well documented that there is a whole new tourism way of thinking, therefore local <laughs> tourism visitations are increasing, notwithstanding that tourism is built into our council plan, including our 10 year vision. I would like to see Bristol Hill Tower structurally rehabilitated, made safe and reopened so that one of our iconic tourist uh, attractions can be enjoyed and the tower to be admired and climbed as it was prior to closure. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Councillor. Bill Councillor Love. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to commend Councillor Labella for raising this important and vexed issue. Unusually, I'm going to have a bit of a dummy spit. This iconic structure known locally as a tower has stood sentinel over Meribara for almost 100 years. It was built in 1932 at the height of the Depression by Susso Labor. In reality, though, the tower is a memorial. It is a tribute to the pioneers who settled here, initially in the pursuit of gold, then staying, they laid the foundations for a permanent town that became Meribara, and those foundations were laid 167 years ago. If we visit the cemetery or war memorials, we don't let them fall into disrepair. So why should our tower be any different? It is a memorial. During the 1950s, the Apex Club took over responsibility for the tower. They laid the road, they put on electricity, and they maintained the actual structure of the tower. In the 1980s, I participated with Apex painting the building from bottom to top. My guess is that's the last time it has been painted. I firmly believe it's time for government departments like DELP to stand up and take responsibility for their assets. We have seen our Premier tear up a road contract and tell us Victorians, I won't pay $1 in compensation. He then wrote out a cheque for $1.2 million, $1.2 billion, when he said he wouldn't pay one cent. Just last week, we heard of a $2 billion blowout of the tunnel project. The ministers were all trotted out and said, 
It's only money, $2 billion. And yet we are told by the government departments when we ask them to restore important community assets that they own, we don't have any money. There is something wrong somewhere. I believe DELP are duty bound to make it structurally sound. But let's go back a little bit in time and learn a lesson. The Apex Club who maintained it for 40 years no longer exists. But I believe if we approached a group like the Mirabara Lions Club, we all know how active they are. And I believe if we approached them, they would readily, I haven't talked to anybody, but I believe they would embrace the tower on Bristol Hill and take over where Apex left off. So let's learn from history. Let's put pressure on DELP and ask them to stand up for their, their asset, but then let us take over and involve community groups to look after it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lerman. Other councillors? Not all, oh, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Lerman. I'm like um, Councillor Lovett, who's, thank you for putting it up again. It's a, it's a uh, it's very historical side, and I don't know all the information Councillor Lovett's got, but I, I know the side, and I've been up the tower as a kid and can't get up there now. But it really, I don't think I'd get up there anyway. I think it's, I'll be too big for it. No, you won't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I, get, I get this thing about we are trying to save, the council is trying to save, and from the community, look after our heritage buildings. And this is what Council Love is on about. Looking after it, and we, why isn't Delft doing what they should do, what they're responsible to do? Why aren't they being a good community citizen? The excuse of having no money is not right in a state government situation. Be a good community citizen, Delft. Be a good community citizen to the state government and do something about this. Put some money to it, get it rectified. And then we as a council might find a group to, to look after as long as it's rectified. It is a shame it's not, not, not going, not happening. And what would happen if we closed Princess Park Grandstand because it was too dangerous and wouldn't do anything about it? I think we'd get a lot of angst, anger from the community, but anger also from the government. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Any other councillors? No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. To just add in finality that uh, both the CNO, CEO and I were at no, uh, uh, Mr. Judd, the new regional manager, he's a very, very fine person. He's the CEO of Bullock Show. I succeeded our CEO there. And uh, a very energetic, capable person. So I think we'll, we'll be able to have personally have great happening in the regional form as well as officially too. So hopefully we'll get some action. Uh, Councillors, that, that's the notice of the promotion. Um, we have, uh, is any urgent business? Uh, other business? No. Confidential business, we have no other, actually, we have no confidential business. But I just have one, one joyful task, and that is uh, on behalf of all of us as councillors, on behalf of the CEO and staff, to wish everyone in our virtual gallery and our whole community a very merry, safe, very safe, uh, but a, a wonderful Christmas and New Year. Please stay safe. Please, uh, please obey all the COVID. Uh, restrictions um, and the alcohol ones too, don't forget about those. But have a wonderful time and let's look forward to a very, very different 2022 and one where we achieve some great things together, working together. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to all. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I'll close the meeting at 7.30 exactly. Thank you.